everyone, Chris Petri here, and uh, we're going to have some uh, fun today doing a small comp. And uh, we're going to use this uh, reference photo here. This is actually a, a painting I did just um, probably not too long ago. Well, it's been about a year or so, I guess, but uh, it's actually a, um, a, a Wyeth painting uh, that I found on Google. So I just kind of copied it off of a Google uh, search. I printed it out on my printer and then I um, set it up in, on my, uh, in front of my studio table and then I painted this one and this is a really cool interesting looking painting it's very subdued with the um, really like not a lot of uh, more of a tonal value type painting so you can have a lot of fun with tonal values on this and kind of like um, maximizing the excitement in a painting using tonal values so we can kind of see here the real dark darks on the edges and now for you know um, for a design approach, this is just fantastic. Like it's like bookends on the um, painting, the design. So it's like two darks on both sides, and then the subject matter in the you know cent central location here. Um, so that really is exciting. Um, those two darks, and then the um, this house here, this um, interesting like stone house out in the countryside, and it's snowy. That's really cool. Winter time, kind of cool. Uh, a feel to that and um, and then the snow too is fantastic and also I thought the uh, road with the um, really just quick kind of strokes you know going into the painting with those uh, dynamic powerful uh, thrusting strokes into the painting that's exciting it, it leads your eye into the painting and and then your eye can go around and travel through the painting and look around and some really key parts to this painting as well would be these um, areas over here beyond the house which would be more in the distance those are really uh, if you can capture these kind of details in a painting that's a really fantastic way to um, bring added uh, interest into the painting so you know your eye wants to wander into this distant area over here because it's kind of cool it looks like a snow drift and then some bushes or something back there and maybe some more snow and um, over here there's some interesting like a tree alongside the house and then there's some snow on a branch and it it kind of this painting just has so much interesting things going on in it um it makes a great comp just to practice and uh, get familiar with those um, interesting concepts that we can use in our in our paintings so I'll just do a more of a um, you know more of a simple um, version of this um, just so we have a, an interesting uh, look at a small comp doing this kind of a, a design and and some of the uh, interesting uh, key effects that, that are here in this uh, painting. So let's get started here. I'll put this across from me and I'll take a new piece of paper here, watercolor paper, and uh, we'll tape it down. down. Maybe I'll use this as a border even too, the uh, tape. And this is good, um, good masking tape. It tends not to rip up the paper at all when I uh, remove it. It's uh, pro drafting tape. Okay, so that's our a nice fixed border we have now with our tape. And we'll do our sketch. And I'll do more of a simple version. It's going to be a little smaller too. I think I'm going to try to fit it onto this, uh, this size uh, rectangle here. And on the original, it's almost about halfway. I'm going to go a little bit less than halfway here. I'll go about a, th a little more than a third up for the uh, for the structure, that house here. And it doesn't have to be exact. It can I can do a little.
something different. And I'll do the door here on the side or in the front of the house. Maybe there's a, a door and a couple windows over here. Maybe a window there. Maybe a window here. And there's a, um, a loft up here with a uh, covering up there. A roof, small roof with a loft, probably with a small pulley for lifting things up into the upper area of the house. And maybe another fireplace over here. And then our tree line is over here. So we'll just do a rough estimate of the tree line. Now here the trees are darker over here. And then we have a maybe a larger tree kind of over here. And again, I'm just doing a, um, a sim simple, more simple version of what I did originally. Um, and then you can also, um, if you wanted to, you can look up the painting online. Um, it's a Wyeth painting. And... There's some rocks over here, <clears throat> and then we have some. I'm just showing the, the road going into the scene. And some indication lines of the, uh, the tree over here. Maybe there's a tree in the back and then another one. Like that. So that's pretty good. Now, with watercolors, we kind of usually do a, a contour drawing. But here, I, I did a more of a lighter kind of a sketch feel to it. Um, but you can contour draw, uh, draw this too as well. The only reason I didn't really contour draw it is because I wanted to do something a little more different than what my reference photo is that we're using, which, which is this here. So since I went with something a little different, contour drawing really, as we practice all the time, is we're really looking at the subject and drawing straight from that subject matter that we're, we're trying to uh, use for our, for our drawing. So if you're going to go and do something different and change something around while looking at something like this, you could contour draw it, but... Um, it might be a little more difficult to do that, so you, this would be just kind of painting, or this would be just drawing. This would be just drawing uh, from like memory, or just sort of you know improvising. So I'm just improvising when I do this, using some of the ideas from that that photograph that I'm referencing, that painting actually that I'm referencing. And I can see the the roof could be a little better over here. This would probably be down lower over here, so this is higher usually the. But for the most part, that's looking all right. Okay, so now we'll get our paints. We might we can do this um, a la prima. So we'll go in and we'll mix up a, a dark with a French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Burnt Sienna, Cerulean Blue, maybe some uh, Lizard and Crimson. So this is a nice, interesting dark, but more in the more in the blue. So I'm going to kind of stick with the blues and the browns. Just make a, a nice dark there, but more in the blue range. It's a cool kind of a wintry scene, so I want to go darker or more blue. Put some worms in there. So I just mix up. And if I don't like this, as I go, I just change it and add and subtract to it. Some green. I should have some green in there. Um, sap green.
So that's a good, good dark. And then let's And some more darks. And then here I can do my uh, tree branches or my tree trunk here and just kind of fire it in. And that was a little bit too wide. Let's see if we can so if I add a little bit of water to that. Alright, so we're moving along here, and um, I kind of noticed um, with my original painting, I I kept the uh, I'll probably use some white, um, some titanium white, to make a few lines to sort of get that more distant look with the um, snow behind this um, the house here. Okay, and then I'll use uh, a rigger brush or a needlepoint brush. Okay, so we used a needlepoint brush here to get some of them really fine branches, and we could do some more over here just to... Most of the branches should go in one direction, I think. Now the <clears throat> the really great thing about this is when you start off with your darks like this, then you can adjust your middle tones, which is really fun to do because you have your darks in now. Now you can kind of see the light and dark of the picture now, like better. So when you start off with your darks, doing like an alla prima painting, this what we consider this alla prima painting when we start off with our darks and 
just so, sort of go right through the painting without any glazings really. Um, so here we have the darks established and now we can go in and do the middle tones, the middle tonal values, and then the lighter tonal values. We can leave most of them white for the white of the paper. And we'll start working on that. I'm going to take a little more of the, I'll do some splashing here. And now we'll get into, we'll do some of the, um, the home here, the structure. And I'll use some uh, yellow ochre, cerulean blue, alizarin crimson, and uh, some burnt umber. And that should give us some good... Here we can go pretty much... We can go right in and we use some of our um, the, the, the darkest darks that we used when we first started. We're going to use those now on the peak of the house. And I'm using a little uh, wet and wet here, which is basically just you know, I did that first wash here with the with the um, with the uh, gold color, and then I start adding in some of these darks on top of it, and it kind of gives it that nice um, blended watery look. And then down here, closer to the ground. Now here I am going to use the glazing method now. So here's where you can use a la prima approach as well as glazing approach when you're doing one painting. So here now I'm using wet and wet. I'm going to glaze this part with all different colors that we use, repeating colors from this darks, the darks, and then as well as adding in some more of this um, yellow ochre to get that golden kind of color, stone and the masonry that's on the building. And then we'll let that dry. And then once that dries, then we can put in some of the windows and doors with the darker darks. And we can also, right now, we can maybe go around the doorway here. And again, this is wet and wet, basically, so we're going around a doorway here. And I changed this a little bit. The light's a little bit. Maybe the light's coming from the right side of the picture more, so that would leave this side of the structure a little lighter. Do the chinning. Maybe an indication of some cooler brush and trees over here in the background. I 
that's pretty good. I, th I think this is... Close, uh, close to complete, so we have the... Maybe we'll use our blow dryer just to get a little bit of... Um, we can dry it a little more quicker for our um, our video here, and then we'll we'll finish up with some doors and windows and a little bit of, you know a little more detail, and we, we should be good. Okay, now we'll, we'll do some more details here. Let's get some of these windows in. And just a few indications, maybe. Um, and there's a door over here. Like that there. I'm just using, using my original mix over here. A little bit of shadow there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We'll do a little splashing. And maybe we'll do a little um, sky color. Let's mix in a little bit of um, Payne's Gray. And Cerulean. And of course I, I let that puddle up so it'll be a little darker over here on the top of the roof so we'll see that roof, um, the ridge of the roof a little more clearly. So I decided to go just with a little more color there. Here, if we add color over here where the branches are, just one one or two quick 
uh, strokes with water on there because too much movement with the brush is going to smear all the um, branches. So that's a good thing to keep in mind if you're going to uh, do like a light wash over any darks. Just try to do them very fast and just one or two flicks of the brush to get the paint on and that's it. And it shouldn't be a problem. So we did our sky wash. Maybe a little bit of sky color in the, in the snow. Like that. And then from there you can do you can do more detail. You can take some titanium white paint maybe with a little bit of yellow ochre mixed in and do a little highlight. Let's try to do that. So I'll just take my titanium white. And I've already got some yellow ochre mixed in there. I usually put yellow ochre in the paint a lot on the titanium white. And we can add a few more branches if we wanted to. And too much detail sometimes can get a little bit, um, can maybe ruin, ruin the painting like this because it's kind of a quick, um, nice loose feel to this painting. And uh, so I did add a tiny bit of titanium white here, as you can see, just for a couple little small areas. And that's it. And this is a nice. Uh, small comp. Maybe I'll try to zoom in a little more. Okay, so that's the finished look. Um, pretty simple. Um, darks first on the ends, and then um, the rest is pretty much um, goes pretty easily. Then just getting in some color in the um, the house and painting around the roof, the white roof there, and and that's pretty much it. It's a nice, uh, cool feel, a nice snowy scene here. So I hope everyone tries this. Try it two, three different times, different colors, maybe. Um, uh, you could change the design around a little bit maybe and do um, the uh, the house in a different uh, angle with the roof maybe different or add some more details to it. Maybe try it a couple times a little larger maybe. This is about a 5 by 6 or 5 by 7 And um, have fun with it. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.